All right, so here is chapter 40, which is everything about the immune system. We're going to start off by talking about different infectious diseases that our immune system would ultimately have to fight. So a disease um, is any change to your body. So basically, you know, your body is at rest, normal function, we're at homeostasis, then all of a sudden something enters and changes that. Okay, so we have disease-causing agents called pathogens. Okay, and these pathogens cause these diseases that are infectious diseases. Okay, and the sum of our diseases can come from a variety of different things. Okay, it could be from bacteria, viruses, or fungi, which are, you know, a little bit too small for us to see. Um, some are more avoidable, like uh, materials in the environment, like cigarette smoke, which we've talked about already. And some, unfortunately, are genetic, like hemophilia and other um, diseases that run in the family. So when we're talking about bacteria and viruses, these are our tiny little microbes that are impossible for us to see with the naked eye. Okay, and for viruses, they are really fast acting. They are really difficult to fight at times. Um, what they do is they attach to the cell surface. They basically copy their genetic material into the cell and change the cell's function. So it kind of takes over the living cell and it changes its normal, you know, its habits, its normal function, and changes it to that of the virus, okay? And some diseases would be like the common cold, the flu, and smallpox. Some um, infections by viruses are a lot more uh, serious than others, um, but they are treatable. Uh, bacteria... Um, some of these are going to be infection, like streptococcus infections, blottus, um, diphtheria. Okay, and what they do is they break down the tissues of the organism and they release toxins into the body. So unlike viruses, they don't go and infect the cell itself. What it does, it just starts breaking down um, the organism as a whole. Okay, and luckily most bacteria are harmless to humans. Okay, but you know, there are going to be times where some bacteria, you know, that's why we have to be careful of some bacteria because it can cause a lot of problems. Our protists think about just like little worms or little insects, little animals. Okay, and these transport from person to person. Okay, we had currently right now the main thing would be like Zika virus. Okay, but then, you know, we had malaria passing from mosquito to mosquito um, insects. We're passing on um, diseases like the African sleeping sickness, okay, water contamination. Um, these are all transported by these little worms, animals, insects, things like that. And then when we're getting more specific with just worms, okay, flatworms, um, round worms, they cause diseases within humans themselves, especially parasitic worms, like blood flukes, um, tapeworms, and hookworms. Uh, lastly, our fungi, um, these are probably more common, okay, things like athlete's foot, ringworm, I know a lot of um, athletes can get both of these, obviously, at least foot, but then ringworm is also very common as well. This is outer skin infections, and you can actually see them with the naked eye. Other fungal infections can happen anywhere that you have a mucous membrane, so your mouth and your throat, and then even places like your toenails and your fingernails can get fungal infections. So how they spread, okay, would be physical contact. Obviously, if you're contagious, you touch another person, um, you're going to spread that disease or that sickness, okay? If you're have an infectious disease and you touch a person, you're going to pass that, okay? There's also sexual contact. There's also airborne, okay? If you are sick and you cough right into someone's face, obviously they're going to get it, right? If you cough constantly around other people, they're going to be more prone to get the sickness. There's also contamination by food and water, okay? There's a reason why people say don't share food with someone who's sick, okay? There's also times where, you know, people can get food poisoning because there's pathogens in the actual food. Okay, uncooked meats. Okay, that's why it's really important to cook your meat thoroughly or else you, there's bacteria growing there. And contaminated water is probably one of the biggest ways that people can get um, these sicknesses. Infected animals is also a big um, 
way that diseases are spread. I mean, the protease itself, they're the reason why they spread. Um, but animals can also spread infectious diseases. They carry a lot of pathogens. And when you when they go from person to person, these are called vectors, okay? So a mosquito would be a vector. Okay, but there are ways to fight these infectious diseases and antibiotics and antiviral drugs are the way to go. Um, what they do is they basically kill the bacteria without harming the cells of the host. Okay, and what they do is they work to basically break down the cellular processes um, that protect these viruses. So the earlier you find these viral infections, the better it is because that then the drugs will be um, way more inclined to work better. Okay, and there are also over-the-counter drugs um, for things like the flu, the cold. You know, you can just get um, normal medicine, cough syrup, over-the-counter. Um, the more serious the infection or disease gets, or the illness gets, um, you won't be able to get them over-the-counter. But you can, you know, get a prescription for pretty much anything to fight a lot of these diseases. And so the best treatment for most diseases includes rest, well-balanced diet, and lots and lots of fluid. So the minute you start feeling a little bit sick, just start taking care of yourself. Okay? It's the end of section one.